Hello. So thanks for joining me today for this video. Um, I'm going to walk you through a little sneak peek of module one of my new course, Open Portal. So Open Portal is a self-paced online course all about understanding anxiety better and learning some embodied ways of working with that anxiety. So in the first module, we define what is anxiety. We look at some of the differences between anxiety and depression. Some of the main themes um, that I've sort of found as a, a showing up, particularly in my experience of anxiety, some of the main themes, and then also some of the ways anxiety might be showing up for all of us in general. Um, so one of the um, books that's really influenced me and when I read it was just yeah such a gem and really grounded my understanding of of anxiety and felt so resonant to me was um, a book by Cheryl Paul she's an American counselor based I think in Colorado um, and she works with Jungian depth psychology um, and it's called the wisdom of anxiety um, a good friend Ellen who is a yoga teacher and writer uh, recommended it to me. So she has a definition of anxiety that I think is um, really, yeah, just really encapsulates um, several angles of, of what it is and really, really has grounded my understanding. So I'm going to read you that definition. She says, anxiety is a feeling of dread, agitation, or foreboding associated with a danger that does not exist in the present moment. It can also be defined as a general and pervasive sense of dis-ease without an identified source. Anxiety, while often experienced in the body, is a head state that keeps its prisoners trapped in the realm of unproductive and fear-based thinking. Anxiety keeps you on high alert and, at its core, lives the belief that you're not okay, that you'll never be okay, and that you're not safe physically, emotionally, and or spiritually. Anxiety and trust are mutually exclusive. So there's a handful of things in here that I want to point out. Um, the fact that anxiety is a, a feeling of, of dread or a fear of something that's not actually happening in the present moment. And oftentimes it can be a fear of something that might happen based on what we've learned is, is a bad thing to happen or what we've learned from experience in the past. And so it necessarily keeps us away from being fully present in this moment. Um, she says it's often experienced in the body, but it's a head state. And so it lives kind of in the realm of thoughts um, that can have an effect on the body. So she's really pointing to how the, the mind has a direct effect on the body, but then also in turn, and especially as a, um, a body-based practitioner and coach, my experience of working from the bottom up, so working with my body to help make more possible a shift in my mind, has been a huge, um, a huge part of the way that I work and the way we're going to work in the rest of the of the course. Um, and so we're kind of pointing to this synergistic relationship between mind, body, body, mind. Um, and that by working with by working with the mind, we can tend to soothe and ease the body, but also by working with the body, we can tend to make space for the possibility of thoughts shifting. Um, and she says, anxiety and trust are mutually exclusive. So anxiety and trust. So I want to point to three of the main fears that I, I've experienced and kind of, uh, based on my experience with working with other people, have sort of seen show up. Um, and so the first fear is fear of being unable to cope with whatever happens. So anxiety comes up from this fear of not being able to cope with what 
might happen. And again, for me, having worked with my body quite a bit, working with my body has really, really helped me to um, feel like I can trust my ability to cope with circumstances if they arise. Understanding just what's actually happening and being able to shift those feelings has given me a sense of autonomy and agency that I think is really an antidote to anxiety. So again, fear that we won't be able to, to cope, that we, we can't trust our capacity to respond and, and in responding be okay. Um, the other fear is fear of losing control. So anxiety desires through the realm of thoughts, um, particularly intrusive thoughts, which Cheryl talks about quite a lot, um, the desire for, us, for certainty, the desire to control circumstances, because if one can control their circumstances, then one can be safe. But the reality is that there isn't a whole lot of certainty ever. Um, and that's the nature of living. That's the nature of being human is that we are always working with uncertainty. And so part of the work we'll do is to move towards being able to trust that we, um, trust that we'll be able to adapt even when uncertainty exists. We'll be able to adapt to that uncertainty. Um, that losing control isn't necessarily something that completely collapses or obliterates us. That there are some things that we can take, um, there are some things that we can control and there are many things that we cannot and being able to be in that dance between the two. And then the final fear is the fear of being ostracized, rejected, left out, and the fear of being alone. Um, and this is one of those, um, yeah, this is one of those fears that, that comes from how we learned to relate to others. What we learned growing up was, was a safe way of relating and what wasn't which parts of us we had to tamp down in order to be accepted by the group or accepted by our family and which parts of us uh, we were allowed to, to show. And so um, in working with anxiety, we're kind of working with the parts of us that were rejected and giving them space to, uh, yeah, be fully expressed and to be seen by ourselves. So there's a certain kind of um, self-acceptance, self-worth, preservation of our own dignity through boundaries, through, yeah, presencing these lost parts of ourselves that helps us to move towards healthier relationship rather than some of the trends being to, to avoid emotional engagement or to be completely enmeshed and collapse ourselves in order to serve another. So later on in the course, we'll look at some embodied ways of, of being in healthier relationship. So those are a handful of, of fears. And the fear really is... Um, at the crux of it is that anxiety is the, is the opposite of trust, right? So throughout this course, we're going to be looking at ways of moving away from fear and towards trust. So briefly, I'll talk a little bit about ways anxiety might be showing up for you. Um, again, through relationships. Um, if you've had any kind of traumatic experience, be it once repeated or it's ongoing, we, you might feel um, a certain level of hypervigilance and being constantly on the lookout in your external world, constantly dealing with the intrusive thoughts that are trying to keep you uh, safe or on alert, looking for danger. 
Um, this puts us in a state of hyperarousal, which is essentially an anxious state. It's, it's an elevated um, agitation of our system. And so in general, if we think about anxiety and depression on a scale, depression is more towards hypoarousal, meaning a, a lack of engagement or a lack of looking towards and more of a numbness more of a going away from feeling and sensation rather than towards it, which is what anxiety does. And for a lot of us, again, there's this kind of, not so much synergistic, but more of a volleying back and forth between being in an anxious state and being in a depressed state. Because naturally our nervous system to balance out, if we're in one extreme, goes to the other. And that's a big, that's kind of a generalization, but just to kind of ground our understanding a little bit, we can really think of this, this scale of anxiety being on one side, depression on the other, a hyperarousal or being overstimulated versus hypoarousal, a numbing. So that's a lot of information already. So we've defined anxiety. We've looked at some of the main fears that come up with anxiety. We've looked at some of the ways that um, anxiety can show up for us. Um, and oh, one, one way that I forgot to share that I think is really important is transitions, which Cheryl talks a lot about. Transitions from day to night, um, transitions through the seasons, um, from life to death, so the completion of a cycle. Um, yeah, major losses, major gains. So anything that is a major shift is going to have a huge impact on our body-mind system. And again, it comes back to this fear that we'll be unable to cope or that even if we can cope with the change, that we won't ever be as happy or as carefree or that we won't be able to get back to that, that good state that we were in. Um, it's the fear of that never. And again, bringing it all the way back to the beginning, it's a fear that keeps us away from being in the present moment. Which, for those of us who do yoga or any kind of mindfulness practice, being in the moment has some conscious and subconscious ways of helping us to tap into that, the space that is joy, that is delight, that is curiosity. So that's a little bit of module one. We'll go a little bit more deeply into each of those themes. I'll share some of my own personal stories with you. Um, and we'll go into some practices around how to tease out what anxiety is for you, where it's showing up in your life, and how you can begin to work with it on a body-based level. So that's all the stuff we didn't cover. Um, yeah, so if you're interested in, in knowing when Open Portal launches, go to the link in my bio and uh, you can sign up there. It should be pretty easy to follow. And tomorrow we'll move into module two where I'll talk a bit about what's actually happening in the nervous system um, when we're feeling anxious. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you tomorrow.